All right, let's finish up our history class. Um, I'm reading off of uh, Yuval Noah Harari's book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. I highly recommend that book, not for Bible believers at their beginnings, because it's just filled with liberal uh, garbage, but for those who are already strong in doctrine, those who are pastors, those who have an interest in history, Bible-believing pastors who are interested in history, I strongly recommend to read this book. That way they can get another perspective of what the Antichrist, the world around them, the liberal scholars' thinking is of where they're headed toward. The reason why that's important is because if they know what they're heading toward, then they can see more of that Bible being fulfilled of what they will do. They're basically telling you what they're going to do. The world, the liberal scholars here, they're based, the one world government, they're telling you what they're going to do here. So that's why it's important to read this book so that you can figure, uh, figure out and see where we're heading toward and have a better idea how to prepare your ministry, how to prepare your people. So I recommend this book. I'm going to actually read more of his books because it's very incredibly eye-opening how this lost world where they're heading towards. It's very contrary to the Bible-believing Christian, obviously, uh, because we're not following the ways of the world. We follow the Word of God. So that's why uh, this kind of book will not be recommended to Bible believers in general, because you don't want to follow the ways of the world and their thinking here. But if you're a Bible-believing pastor who's already going to follow the book, not this book from Yuval Noah Harari, then it'll be good for you to know this. That way you can see where those who are opposed to the book, the Bible, where that world is heading towards. All right, page 320 for 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. This is his solution for the world that is bound by an AI system. Remember, fresh review is this. We got the post-truth phenomenon, and people are searching, opening their eyes to the truth because of the public who are able to spread out their information. It's not controlled information. It's not the government-controlled elitist information. Public have freedom to access this internet and spread the truth online. So by 2016, the post-truth phenomenon, which it was dubbed that way at that time, was able to spread out and pu the public were able to have access to it. Eventually, they were able to find Bible-believing truth through those means. However, remember, the Internet is part of the world system. It's not the King James Bible. It's not the thing that shows you the truth. It's simply a tool that anyone can use to spread truth or lies. So remember, the majority of the people who post stuff online are those who are not Bible believers. So that's why you're going to hit a bunch of lies as well. Yes, truth has been spreading, but how small is that percentage compared to the lies on the Internet? So that's why it's important to keep in mind the Internet is not your means of truth. It's only the King James Bible. But because the world has rejected that King James Bible, it changed our whole history. So the only way that the King James Bible-believing dispensational truth could be spread out was through that Internet. Yet, that percentage is smaller compared to the percentage, percentage of greater lies. So it just caused so much confusion. Hence, the Lord used our Bible-believing church to be able to use the internet to spread out the truth. I'm not saying that we're the big dogs that the Lord using and we're the only one who has the truth. Far be it from that, but there is no doubt, and whether we like it or not, this is the Bible-believing church, a Bible-believing local church, not just a one person who has his his or her own convictions, all right? It's a Bible-believing local assembly church that has the largest internet channel. So we do, whether we like it or not, we do got to realize how much of a major role we have in this, and we shouldn't mess it up. 
That's the bottom line. That's why I have to mention about our ministry. So the Lord used our ministry to spread out Bible-believing truth, which is wonderful. Yet what happened is because, according to this book, remember, technology, including the Internet, is being more and more controlled by AI. And AI predicts human fleshly patterns. So the tendency of human flesh is not searching out for more truth, even though you think so. It's more so of, according to the book of Judges, every man did that which was right in his own eyes. In other words, it's truth that makes your flesh comfortable, that pleases your preconceived notions and feelings of the flesh. So it's, let's be very honest when you're searching for truth. You don't keep track of your flesh. Let's just be honest about that. Where you think that you're searching for truth, you got to realize you don't really keep track well of your flesh. If there's something that a person gives Bible-believing truth, but maybe you don't like his or her attitude, his or her tone of voice, or you dig up, you know, personal dirt or whatever on his or her life, etc., that's enough uh, for you to turn away from the truth. You have to find something that pleases you. The video quality has to be high. If it's a poor video quality, you're not interested, you're not going to click on it. If it's a title that's not catchy, you're not going to click on it. If it's a thumbnail with, compared to 100 video, videos, and that thumbnail in that Bible-believing truth video doesn't please you, you are not going to click on that. See, so everything depends upon algorithms on what pleases your fleshly eyes, your fleshly views. And because AI is built upon that, that's why it's not really your free choice, even though you think it is. Because Facebook, Google, and those tech giants, they've been, they've been putting their own beliefs and practices into the algorithms where, where you're clicking on one video, the algorithm will make sure that you click on a video that will please the Facebook, Google, Silicon Valley tech giant founders. You have to realize that. So Yuval Noah Harari warns about that, that basically it's not really your free choice. It's actually you're being controlled by a system. You're controlled by a system. And then you will drown in this system the more you keep watching, the more you keep clicking. And then all those uh, tech giants have to do is put more of what they want into the algorithm to control you. So then his solution which is not a good solution, obviously, is a universal basic income system where government keeps track of these tech giants and then makes sure that everyone lives happily ever after and they don't get controlled. Well, that's a communist mindset. You trust your government, really? Trading capital elite elites for liberal government elites. Wow, that's just trading one spirit for another spirit. That doesn't solve anything right there. So he pointed out how these things are prepping up. He exposed so much how this is going to open up to the one world government system where, he, where an antichrist or a bunch of elites can control everybody through their technology and you can't buy or sell, you can't do anything uh, in life without technology. Or maybe, aka, it's called the mark of the beast. See that? So that's why it's very important to understand everything, what he's saying right here, and where we're heading towards. So his ultimate solution is actually a spiritual solution. Would you believe that for a secular guy? For a guy who doesn't, to my knowledge, believe in God, who's more atheist, if not atheist, agnostic, who's a sodomite Jew, who's liberal in thinking, I mean, the Antichrist would love that kind of a solution, a spiritual solution that matches with Yuval Noah Harari's socialist, communist, one world, uh, friendly mindset. It's what he exactly needs. So what is it? What's the solution? It's the same solution Alex Jones and Jordan Peterson rave about. It's a new age solution. It's called meditation. <laughs> that yoga garbage. So look at right here. He said, 
The most important, uh, page 320, the most important thing I realized was that the deepest source of my suffering is in the patterns of my own mind. When I want something and it doesn't happen, my mind reacts by generating suffering. Suffering is not an objective condition in the outside world. It is a mental reaction generated by my own mind. Learning this is a first step towards ceasing to generate more suffering. Since that first course in 2000, I began meditating for two hours every day, and each year I take a long meditation retreat of a month or two. It is not an escape from reality. It is getting in touch with reality. <laughs> for at least two hours a day, I actually observe reality as it is, while for the other 22 hours, I get overwhelmed by emails and tweets and cute puppy videos. Without the focus and clarity provided by this practice, I could not have written Sapiens or Homo Deus. I definitely don't think that meditation is the magic solution to all the world's problem. To change the world, you need to act, and even more important, you need to organize. Fifty members cooperating in an organization can accomplish far more than 500 individuals each working in isolation. If you really care about something, join a relevant organization. Do it this week. Yet it is easier to act and cooperate effectively when you understand the human mind, understand your own mind, and understand how to deal with your inner fears, biases, and complexes. Meditation is far from being the only way to do all that. For some people, therapy, art, or sports can be more effective. When dealing with the mysteries of the human mind, we should regard meditation not as a panacea, but as an additional valuable tool in the what? Scientific toolkit. Would you believe that? <laughs> this changed his mind. You know why? If you read the surrounding pages on that, he mentions that he was skeptical at first. But then what happened is his friend persuaded him to experience it. When he experienced it, it got him to change his mind. When he actually experienced it, it got him to change his mind. So all that scientific, objective reality, naturalism, all that stuff just went out the window. Changed his whole worldview where he started to become more new age and quote unquote spiritual. Now he argues right here, it's not getting away from objective reality, but in my mind it is. But anyway, let me explain his point of view that way I don't be unfair. So his idea is basically, it's not solely meditation or yoga or this new age stuff. His bottom line point is, instead of just being so caught up with the natural conditions in this world that you're enslaved by, it's so important that you stop yourself and reflect your actions with other people. See, by stopping yourself, now there is a partial truth to this. There is a partial truth is that sometimes you have to stop what you're doing because you are being controlled by conditions in this world and reflect on your actions and see if you are in control of your emotions, if you are making the right decisions. You have to critique uh, yourself, critique what you're doing, critique what this world is doing. You got to reflect. You got to stop being a robot just going by the matrix all the time. So, see, it sounds like a great idea, but see what he's doing right here is that he's promoting one, new age garbage. Yeah. Number two, he's promoting any humanist means to do that rather than Christian, the Bible, the word of God's means. That's the problem. Because uh, no matter how much you reflect on yourself, it's still a humanist, naturalist means outside of the word of God, and you will never uh, solve the world's problems that way. That's the problem with this world all the time. For the Christian, he's right. Meditation is the answer, but not the yoga way. It's meditation on the word of God. Meditation and prayer. We got to stop, reflect our actions. We got to have a relevant organization to meet and talk about our problems and what's wrong. You know what that's called? A local Bible-believing church. But to Yuval Noah Harari, it's a humanist organization. It's called education, faculty meeting in universities. It's called a, a Davos meeting. It's called the World Economic Forum. It's called uh, votes, uh, a Senate hearing in government. It's called the ecumenical movement. It's called the one world government. That's his relevant organization. See how dangerous this is? 
We found the answer. It is meditation, reflecting on our faults and our issues by joining a relevant organization together. We found the answer. He's right, but he only gives a humanist replacement for that rather than a biblical replacement. We have a biblical replacement, and that is a local Bible-believing church. If you are stuck on yourself, I keep telling people who watch us online, it's so important. If you're all by yourself thinking you can search for truth, you're no better than Yuval Noah Harari, if not even worse than him. Because you are enslaved according to the robots out there as you keep searching for truth online. That's why it's so important you get outside of that. Try getting off the internet for three months. It will be life-changing. Just read the Word of God, King James Bible, pray, attend a local Bible-believing church, and don't tell me how much you feel better after that, how much your perspectives change, how much your life improves, your health condition improves after that. Don't get me wrong. Uh, like I told you before, if the Lord used our internet to give you Bible-believing truth, wonderful, but don't depend on that. If you don't have a local Bible-believing church, I get it. You can watch us online, all right? But it's got to be, like I told you, the context of a local church setting rather than just interesting topics you want to click on. That's so important. It's, it's, uh, it's so important. If people still doubt me, then how many people do I have in this room who are searching for truth online? They're like you. I have a huge number of people uh, who are like you, but guess what? They realize how much more beneficial it is to attend a local Bible-believing church than being just stuck on the Internet by themselves. How many of you can say amen to that one? Yeah, all right. Even newcomers will admit that too, who watched me online originally and ended up in a Bible-believing church. Huge, drastic difference. Huge, drastic difference. Okay. So now that we understand that, then that's the solution. That's the solution where uh, we can find Bible-believing truth. Let's go to the whiteboard here, and then uh, we'll get back on track. So the, in this AI, oops, okay. In this AI antichrist world, that's going to bring 666 due to the internet phenomenon. Then what's going to prevent this? We already got our answer here. This is what's going to stop and break that cycle. That's going to interrupt this cycle. And what interrupts the cycle, as I mentioned to you before, is having a bunch of Bible believers together. So Bible believers are the only means. A local church assembly, reading your Bible, praying, all the spiritual things that the Lord has told you to do, that's the only means that's going to rescue you, that's going to break this awful cycle that you're in. So Bible believers have stood firm, held their ground, and that's why you got to join this bunch, you got to participate in this bunch. Before I continue on with them on how they spread Bible-believing truth, let's go back and blast to the past a bit. If this is our means for finding Bible-believing truth, we've got to look back in our history, remember? Remember? So we got to go back to our history. What caused this? It, this chain never broke. Let me repeat that again. This chain never broke. Denominations have changed, okay? Denominations did change. Groups of people with different names came out. But the beliefs and practices never changed. That's right. The beliefs and practices never changed. Amen. And what that is, it brought, let's go back. The Great Awakening revivals, right? Let's go back. The spread of missions. Let's go back. The birth of the King James Bible. Let's go back. It's during a timeline where America was at its greatest peak. Where uh, the Lord was truly blessing America. 
So, what happened to this nation's downfall, the success, the greatness of America? How did it fall apart? It's because we rejected, or America rejected its roots. The world, or the whole world rejected its roots. And that is based on the King James Bible and the right doctrines that it carried. By rejecting that, then if you don't believe in the right doctrines from this book, if you don't practice the right doctrines from this book, what else are you going to be practicing? Your own flesh, what you perceive to be right. And you've seen the consequent, the end result of that. That is this right here, where AI will control you. Drowning out in your flesh. Do you see these two roots here? It's either drowning in your flesh, okay? Call it AI, 666, internet, YouTube. I don't care what you call it, Catholic, communist culture. I don't care. The point is, every wrong belief and every wrong practice is rooted and grounded in pleasing your flesh. Uh, yeah. Dispensationalism, King James onlyism, attending a local Bible-believing church, soul-winning street preaching, Baptist distinctives, our Baptist denomination that rooted from independent fundamentals, all that rooted in what? Following the Word of God, what it says. Believing what exactly what it says and following it. These are the two chains that you see, these two streams you see throughout history from the past 2,000 years, which stream are you? That's why it doesn't matter if you call yourself truther. If you're pleasing the lust of your flesh, you're stuck on the algorithm th thing, you're part of the wrong stream, the devil's system. I don't care if you're a saved Christian. If you teach wrong doctrine, you don't believe one saved, always saved. You don't believe dispensational salvations. You think all different other modern Bible versions are okay, stuck like that. You somehow contribute to the wrong stream. That's why I emphasize this so much. I emphasize this so much about a King James dispensational Bible-believing church that's independent, fundamental, Baptist by denomination. That's so important. Dr. William Grady will prove this stream that it's a King James only foundation. And without that, that's what contributed to our entire apostasy. So look at that whiteboard again that I'm showing you. Look at that whiteboard again that I'm showing you. And notice how we ended up in that AI 666. How are we going to end up there? Do you see that? It's because of that wrong root. That wrong root. Compared to this route. Now, are you really following this route? If you're not, you got to look at that route then. You got to look at that route. All right. Now, let me read from uh, Dr. William Grady's book. That way we could see if what I said is true or false. He, this is found in his book, Perilous Times, which I strongly recommend. This is his last I would consider his last volume in history, which I hope not. I hope that he'll keep writing till Jesus comes. Amen. But let me show you how he shows this chain, all right? It's a King James only dispensational chain that's so important. When they attacked that book, corrected that Bible, that's when it all fell apart. And we ended up with the globalist controlled, elitist, Catholic, communist culture world. Serpent, uh, this is uh, uh, on page, uh, uh, this is in his book, Perilous Times. I don't have the page number, I apologize. But it's in the section called Serpents in Paradise of that same book. As a bedridden, James Madison, so let's go back to the beginning, America's success. Approaches er earthly departure, his burden for America was heavy. Having no children of his own, the father of the Constitution determined to bequeath his natural, national progeny a last word of paternal consolation. In the fall of 1834, the ailing statesman Penn, for posthumous disclosure, his poignant final advice to my country. As this advice, if it ever see the light, will not do it till I am no more. <laughs> it may be considered as issuing it from the tomb. 
where truth alone can be respected and the happiness of man alone consulted. He will be entitled, therefore, to whatever weight can be derived from good intentions and from the experience of one who has served his country in various stations through a period of 40 years, who has spoused in his youth and adhered through his life to the cause of its liberty, and who has borne a part in most of the great transaction which will constitute epochs of its destiny. The advice nearest to my heart and deepest in my convictions is that the union of the states be cherished and perpetuated. Let the open enemy to it be regarded as Pandora with her box open and the disguised one as the serpent creeping with his deadly wiles into paradise. This amazing testament speaks to the truth that the God of this world was not about to relinquish any turf without a fight. Mr. Madison warned his posterity that their freedom would be threatened by enemies, seen and unseen. That's where globalists come in. That's where Catholic conspiracies come in. Remember the Catholic conspiracies? Even to the beginning of globalists, which you can go back to Illuminati or to the Freemasons back that time, Jesuits and Catholic conspiracies have always reigned. They were the mother of everything. And I proved that through our previous history lessons. In How Satan Turned America Against God, <laughs> I posited three main serpents that the devil would employ to eventually destroy our liberties. Slavery, secret societies, and Roman Catholic immigration. See? Matching uh, majority with what I already told you all this time. One does not have to be a rocket scientist to see how this satanic tri trilogy has spit its venom since the 2016 election. The peculiar institution is still encumbering Japheth's descendants. Despite 750,000 Civil War deaths, vis-a-vis uh, vis -vis critical race theory, Black Lives Matter, urban riots, reparations demands, Al Sharpton's ugly puss, etc., then who could miss the secret societies, a.k.a. the deep state orchestration of the beep, 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 all right? Friendly AI. Hi. And their successful coup d'etat of President Trump's re-election. The, these modern traitors fulfill 2 Timothy 3, 4. As for Rome's part in our present chaos, how did the Donald's Catholic Supreme Court appointees do when push came to shove? Did those nice right-wing ideologues throw him under the bus via 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 6? Has anyone noticed that the escalating border crisis just happens to mirror the exact blueprint I gave in What Hath God Wrought in 1996? Did all those warnings by Samuel Morse about the Vatican's clandestine plan to invade America with illegal immigration come to pass? The St. Leopold Foundation for the Furtherance of Catholic Missions in America? Did the 2002 Hollywood film Gangs of New York illustrate the identical material in my chapter, The Devil's D-Day? And did the floodgates open under a pro-abortion Roman Catholic president named Joe Biden, supported by his Catholic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, did the specific transfer of these COVID-infected in illegals to the leading red states, Texas and Florida, spark a resurgence of the COVID uh, blank, blank, blank? Was a Jesuit trained Dr. Anthony Fauci involved? All right, so uh, that's a mouthful, right? So let me translate to basic English and... Uh, let me go specifically, slow it down a bit. This is, remember, you might recall from my other drawings, this timeline was the success of 1600s to 1900s. But then it started to fall apart during middle 1800s. 1900s still clung on to its successful roots. Then this time period, came to the scene. And this time period was revised Christianity, starting from eight, uh, mid-1800 to today. Based off of the revised version, and the revised version just corrupted everything where corrupt corrected the King James Bible, which hence messed up where we are today. This is the internet phenomenon, right? So within this timeline of the internet phenomenon, we now hit 2016 to today. I showed you um, 
excuse me. I showed you what happened uh, during the uh, 20th century to 21st century. I talked about that. I mainly hit up to 2016. I covered some specifics of conspiracies, gl more globalist control, more liberalism spreading out. The Catholics always followed their tales, right? I showed you throughout the Obama era to Bush to the war on terrorism, uh, all the way back to JFK assassination. I've showed what happened at the 20th to 21st century. And then I stopped at 2016, you might recall, because that's that post-truth phenomenon. And I explained that where, we're our t where we are today. But I didn't explain, I only explained the internet because that's probably the most important timeline, the most important event in 2016. Now let's talk about the spiritual darkness that happened. Let's talk about current events where we're at. 2016 to uh, 2023 or to today. During that time, we've, uh, we've come across something where we never thought we'd see before. COVID hit. That really convinced that something was wrong. We remember what happened with Jeffrey Epstein with his secret rings. That really opened the eyes of people that there exist elites who have these weird-looking rings connected to government leaders, connected to billionaires, uh, Bill Gates, Clinton, etc. And then not only the Jeffrey Epstein phenomenon, but we also had so many UFO sightings that happened, which was weird. That came out. And then obviously we can't forget uh, BLM, and that movement just showed how the world it was falling apart into chaos. And don't forget what followed the heels of that is the Vatican. Every single time. They never went away. Their role is not done. They will continue to this phenomenon. They will be here during this phenomenon. They will never leave. They will never leave. They're going to outlast us Bible believers. You might say, why? We get raptured. They're going to continue on into the tribulation. So notice that this Vatican follow its heel. You want proof? Dr. Grady already told you all these names. Um, everything that I told you about this history is not new news. I don't need documentation to prove it. But if you want it, then just simply go to our Real Bible Believers channel. <laughs> and all this, what I just said to you, is based off of our playlist, End Times and Demons. Just watch all those videos. I give documented evidences and proofs about all these things. Uh, suspicious things going on in the election. We saw that, correct? It showed that we can't really trust our voting system. It just showed how everything is rigged nowadays. It's just so messed up. It's just so messed up. Even Democrats are admitting that one, too. Obama admitted the weird stuff going on with machines. And even if everyone believes that the machines are okay, condition, they still believe it's rigged in some way. So why is that? It's because of media influence. That's what the liberals complain about. See? So in other words, nothing is a fair election system. Everyone admits that everybody is rigged in some way. So you can't trust your system nowadays. It's not a flawless system. It's totally flawed. You can't go by what happened to America's beginnings roots, right? A Baptist distinctive of what? Freedom of speech based on a religious moral context. That was priority one, not secular news media. That was secondary or third tier. This one was... Uh, Religious means morality was primary number one for an independent mindset. What happened to that? that? That kind of system is out of the window, and they preferred more of an independent voting rights of the people based on immorality. Just like what? The age of enlightenment. The reign of terror in France. Notice it, it went by the people's power, and it was chaos. It matches so much with this. Why? because they forgot the Baptist distinctive, independent, local, autonomous entity based on morality, religion, especially biblical principle. By rejecting the Baptist distinctive and making it their own, you are seeing a reign of terror 
all over again. Now that I've explained uh, all of that, the Catholic conspiracy never left, like I said, right? And those videos would prove it. He, Grady gave some examples. Think about every major figure you can think of that had the power and the influence to change everything in our world, both conservative and uh, liberal, okay? Think about Trump. Oh, the savior of the world. He graduated from a Catholic university, Fordham. Uh, and Anthony Fauci graduated from uh, the Jesuit school. Think about Nancy Pelosi. She dubs herself Catholic. Joe Biden, current president, Catholic. Uh, think about the two governors that pushed the lockdowns at the beginning. Think about the one governor in California, the governor or was governor in New York. Think about those two governors. Though they are Catholic by denomination. Think about uh, the Supreme Court judges, like William Grady said. Oh, we're able to have a victory against those abortion rights people. Majority of them are Catholics. Nearly all, of, uh, nearly all conservatives are actually Catholic, those Supreme Court justices. Nothing, uh, nothing that the Catholic Church can't get its paws on, they affect all parties. They will win. Fox News, majority of them are Catholic. Liberals who are Catholic, they got the popes. They got uh, all the other liberal Catholic powers combined with them. See, there's no way, there's no way the Vatican will disappear from the elites. They will always follow. Ron DeSantis, oh, praise the Lord for him. Didn't you know he was parts of Knights of Malta? Wow. Catholic Knights of Malta? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, see, I told you. Now, I'm not saying all of these people are Catholic, but the point is that the Vatican, they will make sure that their power will remain by making sure, making sure that they tie themselves to any powerful, influential figure. They will, they will try very hard. I've proven to you that the Christian churches, that they're all hooked and tied to Catholic powers, the ecumenical church movement. We've studied that in our previous church history. So this is where we're at. This is all current events history that I just told you. And all of it can be proven if you are to look in our previous history lessons, as well as that playlist, End Times and Demons, that I mentioned to you before. And then all of that will be proven. Okay, now let's uh, go back. Otherwise, I'll never finish this history class, huh? Okay. I am determined. I will finish this. <coughs> so, how did we end up in that mess? Remember, rejecting the King James Bible, right? Now let's see it. Catholic conspiracy never left, right? Let's prove that chain now. However, the whore, that's the Catholic Church, deadliest attack occurred when she sank her fangs into the King James Bible. Told you so. As President Andrew Jackson lay dying, he pointed to an AV 1611 and said, that book, sir, is the rock upon which our republic rests. Every pope has known this from the night the Jesuit-led Guy Fawkes plot to kill James I was foiled on November 5th, 1605. Heretofore, the growth of English Protestantism has been linked to our possession of a vernacular Bible. So in 1582, Rome endorsed the adage, if you can't beat him, join him. See, the Vatican, like I told you, will join any political party, combine themselves with any Christian church to keep their movement going. Producing her own English New Testament rendered by Jesuits at Reims, the Old Testament in 1610 at Douay, a marginal reference in the first Catholic English Bible predicted that the king's revisers, listen, would be abhorred in the depths of hell. He says, yawn. <laughs> The anti-KJV poison began to work as the monarch of the books appeared. Amen. That was our victory. The liberal Protestant Dr. Hugh Broughton said he, quote, had rather be rent in pieces by wild horses than any such translation by my consent should be urged upon poor churches. That, see this? The devil was attacking that King James Bible. The main difference, you notice how it's always scholars? It's always some liberal. It's always some Catholic thing. The main difference between the two competing Bibles was in their underlying texts. The KJV New Testament, along 
with its six precursors, was translated primarily from the Textus Receptus, which is received text, the predominant Greek tradition of the manuscript era, also known as the majority, traditional Byzantine and Antiochian texts. The Dewey Rames issued from the same flawed manuscripts that Jerome used for his Latin Vulgate. The Bible that ushered in the Dark Ages, the manuscript authority for Rome's 1610 counterfeit, were those two infamous 4th century Alexandrian codices, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, prefigured by those two Alexandrian vessels in Acts 27 and 28. Satan's strategy was simple. Now I'm reading page 191. Uh, I'm sorry, the other pre previous pages were in his chapter on Paradise Lost. <coughs> While American Christians could never be duped into dumping their beloved AV 1611 for a Catholic Bible, the trick was to get them to swap up to a better Protestant version. Uh, yet based on the same corrupt Greek text below, the plan called for revising the KJV in England, then exporting it to the United States for some good old Yankee tweaking. The main culprits were Anglican Bishop Brooke Foss, Westcott, and Cambridge Professor Fenton John Anthony Hort. Remember I told you, the Anglican Church, I don't see it much different from Catholic. So I'll simultaneously dub them the same. Now I know technically they are different. They are, pro they are more Protestant, so to speak. However, they are so Catholic friendly. And when you go to their church and their practices, you really don't see a difference. Except you study their doctrine carefully, then you'll find the difference. <coughs> Though technically Protestants, oh, see, Grady's mind is like mine. I didn't even know that. See, so note their extent letters reek with pro-Catholic sympathies. I told you so. If you study history and if you have the same Bible-believing truth, even though you have no idea what the other guy is saying, you'll come to the same conclusions. Mariolatry, purgatory, popery, Oxford movement. That was the birth of the revised Christian movement. Revised version. Unbeknown to many, both men hated the United States of America. Ah, that's how America fell apart. It's by a revised Christian mentality. In one of his letters, Dr. Hort wrote, I cannot say this much, this is important, as yet to soften my deep hatred of democracy in all its forms. Do you see that right there? I care more for England and for Europe than for America. How much more than for all the blank, the blank in the world? And I contend that the highest morality requires me to do so. Whatever people may say to the contrary, the American empire is a standing menace to the whole civilization of Europe. And sooner or later, one or the other must perish. Surely, if ever Babylon or Rome were rightly cursed, it cannot be wrong to desire and pray from the bottom of one's heart that the American Union may be shivered to pieces. Uh, th this guy is demon-possessed. This guy promotes Catholic stuff. You notice how he sneaks his, way in, sneaks his way in? Even though rightly, Catholic may be rightly cursed as Babylon, it's not wrong to say that America is shivered to pieces. Having covered this history in final authority, only a brief review is necessary. From a, so let's refresh our memories. From 1853 to 71, the two academics secretly made a new Greek text from Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. It was then smuggled into the Church of English, England Revision Committee, <coughs> then unleashed on the gullible, mostly conservative participants after being duped into agreeing to an iron rule of silence. After 10 years of combative revision, the English Revised Version slithered out on May 17, 1881. The Old Testament completed the project in 1885. The same year, 20% of Nashville's populace got saved listening to Sam Jones preach out of a King James Bible. With the dynamic duo's release of the New Testament and the original Greek, having replaced the Texas Receptus readings in over 5,000 places, the Revised Version ultimately altered the KJV in some 36,000 particulars. The key observation is that the so-called Revised AV 1611 caused great rejoicing within the ranks of Roman Catholicism. Page 192. Come on, man. Why does it keep doing that? The very Reverend Thomas S. Preston of St. Anne's Roman Catholic Church in New York was quick to report the brief examination which I have been able to make of the revised version of the New Testament has convinced me 
that the committee have labored with great sincerity and diligence, oh yeah, sure, and that they have produced a translation much more correct than that generally received among Protestants. It is to us a gratification, I bet you it was, to find that in very many instances. They have adopted the reading of the Catholic version. They admitted that. I told you, y'all didn't believe me, huh? Catholic, liberal, or a.k.a. communist influence. You notice that? From the beginning of a revised Christian movement. He hated democracy, remember? Remember, he, he was pushing these anti-Protestant tendencies with more Catholic-friendly tendencies. This culture, let me repeat it again. I don't care if you believe, believe it or not. I told you so, and I'll say it again. This culture is a Catholic communist culture. It is, whether you believe it or not. And if you're so blind not to believe it yet after so many historical evidences and now this lesson that I showed you, you're so blind. Right. And have thus by their scholarship confirmed the correctness of our Bible. Oh! Psh, correcting the Bible. The Dublin Review for July 1881 predicted the new version will be the death knell of Protestantism. Literally hundreds of modern perversions have come and gone over the past century showcasing such spirituality as the Black Bible Chronicles Ebonics translation of Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent was one bad dude. A sodomite-friendly version, the Queen James Bible, released in 2011. The 400th anniversary of the A.V. 1611, same time. Pitched as a King James Bible, quote, edited to prevent homophobic misinterpretations, end of quote. And the exclusive, just for Trekkies, Klingon language versions rendering of Psalm 23, 1. All I can say is, beam me up, Scotty. There's no intelligent life down here. How many onliners do you see doing that with the you know, Yahshua and Hebrew Greek wordings? What happened to our world? We've gone insane, man. Insane. We fell apart. We fell apart. That's. What are we going to do now? What are we going to do? This is uh, Dr. Grady's uh, encouragement. I wanted to take time reading the whole thing, but I do not have time. So I just want to say, go to the section, The Last Charge to Philadelphia, and I'll read some of these things to you. Because I only have, would you believe it, seven minutes to finish everything. We have now arrived at the most critical juncture of this book. As previously seen, it took roughly 1,725 years for a select portion of the body of Christ to experience the blessings of 1 Timothy 1.4, courtesy of the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. I told you what that was, right? A Baptist distinctive? Freedom of speech based on a moral religious context? Biblical context? But it required only 230 years for the church to lose its unprecedented freedom with a cabal of mostly misguided Baptist academics literally inaugurating the entire modern Bible revision movement by commissioning the American Bible Union version in 1850. So that's where those Baptists, remember, were being infiltrated by Catholic, communist, as well as cons uh, conspiratorial elites. Remember that one? I talked to you about that Baptist globalist. An example is uh, Martin Luther King Jr. I gave you examples with uh, the Clintons, etc. <laughs> Those initial Baptists who transitioned from the Sardis Church Age to the Philadelphia Age were commended accordingly. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. That first generation of bloody Sardis refugees entered the Philadelphia era, having kept his word, refusing to recant. Throughout Philadelphia, the majority of born-again believers, both Baptist and Protestant alike, exhibited the scriptural distinctives of their age, going out through an open door to spread the word of God with hearts of brotherly love. So remember, uh, denomination wasn't a big issue that time. Recall that. 
But once wrong doctrine and immorality seeped in, that's where denominations and uh, paying attention to doctrinal differences was very significant and important. Uh, meanwhile, a minority of Laodicean-minded Christians maintained their own definitive traits of civil rights, lukewarmness, and materialism. That's what happened during mid-1800s. We saw that. It was creeping in. But now, 20th, 21st century, it's, however, when the Laodicean age begins with the ASCV 1901, the numbers start to reverse themselves. The Philadelphia remnant grows smaller and smaller, while the new Laodicean majority grows larger and larger, which brings us to that fateful voyage in Acts 27. All right. With the more part of Laodicea at the helm, the old ship of Zion will eventually wreck on the rocks, forcing this is the right group. The last generation of Pauline, rightly dividing, post-perilous times, pre-tribulation, KJV-only independent Baptists overboard. Now at such a pivotal moment, the Holy Spirit was not about to leave his Philadelphia remnant without a final charge and exhortation. All right, that's very important. Continuing on, the significance... Uh, uh, verse 10 cannot be overstated. It constitutes the all-important final charge to the Philadelphia remnant. Note how the Holy Spirit is now addressing those believers who are still keeping his word on the very cusp of the rapture itself. Because thou hast kept the word. See, maintaining what? A KJV only, dispensational, doctrinally minded set. I don't care if they call you bibliolaters. I don't care if they call you so narrow-minded, bigoted on believing literally every word that Bible says. That's, we have to keep the word. That's what the Bible says. On the cusp of the rapture, those are the group that God will use. You see that? Amen. That's encouraging. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. If that's not a pre-trib rapture proof text, I don't know what it is. How, however, the surviving... Okay, let me uh, roll down here. i got to briefly do this one. He points out right here... Uh, oh, uh, I passed it. I'm very sorry. Uh, however, the surviving Philadelphia remnant at the end of Laodicea have a unique possession that their Thyatira forefathers could only dream about. Therefore, while the ancient charge to hold fast is obviously implied, the Lord also enjoins us in Revelation 3.11 to continue holding that priceless King James Bible while we are holding fast ourselves. What's our advantage compared to other ages, church ages before? We got the luxury more than ever before, of, of the King James Bible and its study methods. We've known so much more of that word compared to other ages before. Do you realize that? So we got a huge armament against, I mean, this is exciting. Like Dr. Kyle Stevens preached at the Peacock's Jubilee. This is such an exciting time to be a Bible believer, more than ever before. We're against impossible odds. The last age of apostasy, apostasy on the cusp of the rapture. Do you realize this is the group that God will use out of all other groups before? This is an exciting time. Philadelphia never had this before. Not even the reformers had this before during the Dark Ages timeline. We got something unlike any other era. We're up against the powers of the world, government, media, and schools, through Catholic communist cultural means, I mean, the globalist agenda behind everything, we are up against all of that lot. Wow, what a privilege and honor. And we got the knowledge of that book in our hands more than any other before. You got to realize, we can be, we could be, we could be the most powerful team ever that the Lord has saved up. We are basically that last ace card or wild card, basically, that he's going to pull up in the game against the enemy who looks like he's winning. He mentions right here of an example of a football player, and this is what he ends up right here. He says, this is exactly what the Philadelphia remnant has to do in the closing minutes of our Super, Super Bowl contest against the God of this world. We too must put our heads down, 
protecting our precious King James Bible just as tightly as the fridge protected that football. Then steamroll Satan's linebackers as we rumble into heaven's end zone at the rapture. Then the real Super Bowls will begin as in those seven bold judgments in Revelation 16. For soon after that Philadelphia door closes, another door opens up above. And remember that impressive 10 karat gold, 40 diamond encrusted Super Bowl ring, including Perry's record size 25, will seem as nothing more than a worthless Bugazi when compared to our eternal rewards. So don't let the devil's defense strip that book from your hands, that no man take thy crown. Let's close with... Uh, one verse here, all right? One verse. We'll forget 2 Timothy uh, 3 for time's sake, all right? So 2 Timothy 3 talks about in the last days, perilous times shall come, matching with what Dr. Grady explained to you. All the list of sins, traitors, heavy, high-minded, lovers of themselves, ever learning, never coming to knowledge of truth, matches perfectly to a T to today. More than any other age before. More than any other age before. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, notice the Antichrist in verses 8 through 12 controls them. It's as if they don't have free choice and discernment, the capacity to find truth anymore. Because they drowned in the lusts of their flesh and the Antichrist can manipulate, control them. See that? That matches uh, very well with what I showed you before, right? See that? That AI, okay? We talked about this, we talked about this, ended up in this. So, what do we do? Notice Bible believers right here. See that? Never left the Bible believers right here. The Bible believers is that movement that comebacks everything that's going on in this chaos, that breaks this chain and cycle. So, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. But we, see that? contradicting those people deceived by the Antichrist, AI agenda, where you're seeing where it's heading toward. But we, this is church age Christians, are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath chosen from the beginning, chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Amen. All right, where's our truth? The word of God. He wasn't talking about internet. That didn't exist that time. He was talking about the word of God right here, the word of truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the what? Glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means that you're going to obtain that rapture when Jesus comes in his glory. So we hold on to the word of God until that rapture comes because we're called to. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Verse 17, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Amen. We close our history by me encouraging you, by uh, reminding you again to hold fast to this belief ever since the beginning. The Bible believers, see this dotted line? Never forgotten that root. Bible believers is what has spread out Bible believing truth that destroyed that cycle. Hold on to that. And that word of God, remember last history lesson? How do we spread the truth through the word of God? When we have it, when we hold fast to it, it's got to come out of us. We can't just keep it in. So how do we come out? Well, we mentioned the internet we're still able to use, so thank God for that one but it's becoming more manipulated by AI. I believe our time to close the internet will come one day because the AI will take it over. So it might come one day unless Jesus comes sooner. But then these, uh, we still have the freedom to keep spreading truth on internet so far, and we have still the freedom to pass out tracts, literature. That's why Chick Tracks spread them out. We still have the freedom to do street preaching and talking to people about Jesus Christ. So while we still have the freedom, we still do that. While we still have the freedom, they haven't restricted churches from meeting. So you got to attend a Bible-believing church and plant more Bible-believing churches. And while the world did not kick out missionaries yet, and those who have been banned by those countries, they do what they can underground. We spread out Bible-believing missions. This is so important to spread out Bible-believing truth. If you're... 
the Bible says, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. So you still get deceived by Satan, the Antichrist world system, no matter how much King James Bible believing truth you know, unless you do them. That's why I urge all of you, attend a Bible believing church, uh, get involved. No matter how many corruption, scandals, or imperfections you can find with Bible-believing pastors out there, this is still the best crowd, and I would not trade that for the world. You got Dr. William Grady that I just read. He, uh, he had his uh, volumes of books. He used to be uh, an IFB professor from Jack Hiles School. But then as those IFB people started to fall into apostasy, Hiles' legacy fell apart into apostasy. William Grady got his o eyes open to the King James Bible Believing Truth by Jack Patterson, who gave him Dr. Upman's book, Manuscript Evidence. And then the IFB people kicked him and banned him since. Uh, Jack Patterson, he started out Boys Homes and Rescue Missions. News media would uh, try to... Uh, negate him, make him look bad, but to this day he's still alive and he's still preaching and then helping out uh, the people, those who are broken in poverty as best as he could. You get Sam Gipp who wrote the simplest books defending KJV only truth and it became the Greek and Hebrew scholars nightmares. They all know who Sam Gipp is because of his booklets that are spreading around. You get David Peacock, who started another, the Bible Doctrine Institute, and that was able to spread out Bible-believing truth even further. So you got also Bible-believing institutes that were being planted. You get Pastor Chad Reese, who also started his institute. You get Pastor Andrew Sluter, who started his Bible-believing institute. You still got Dr. Upman's Pensacola Bible Institute, still running over there by Pastor Donovan. So Bible-believing truth is still spreading out with Bible-believing institutes. Dr. David Walker, he uh, wrote the best book on dispensationalism, The Bible Believer's Guides to Dispensationalism. He played the scholar's level. He used their books, their materials, their semantics and works, and, dis and exposed them of being part of the revised Christian movement. Now we finally have documented evidence that they're part of a revised dispensational movement not the real, true dispensational movement itself. You get uh, Wilson Calvin, Native American, who's ministering to those Native Americans, the Navajo people, and other people in uh, Arizona, preaching. And then you get uh, Terrence Calvin, an evangelist, who is from that as well. He uh, travels around preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Dave Spurgeon is also another evangelist, spreading Bible-believing truth. He was part of... Uh, he was part of a biker group that were rivals of Hell's Angels. And he was the second leader in charge. He broke a man in half and then the feds caught him. He would have ended up prison for life. But then he became a changed creature in the Lord Jesus Christ. Got exposed to Bible-believing truth. And then became a Bible believer himself. You get Greg Estep, who started a charity. Uh, I think it's still called Charity Bible Institute. Another Bible believing institute. That's where, uh, to my knowledge, Spurgeon got his degree from. That's where, to my knowledge, P David Peacock got his degree from. Uh, that is where uh, Vince Massa, that's where uh, Herbert Noe's followers got exposed to the camp meeting style of running around and shouting and then, uh, you know, praising the Lord. I mean, Greg Estep's ministry was very responsible for that one. And I don't want to lose that legacy of Bible believers. That's why I do believe in carrying it on. And uh, if you wonder why we sing, shout, run the aisles, I don't want to lose our history. I don't want to lose our legacy. And in Berkeley, of all places, in a liberal Silicon Valley area, in San Francisco, in San Jose, Santa Clara, I want to do that. I just want to rub dirt on their faces. Gail Ripplinger, the Lord raised up a woman to write out New Age Bible versions. She uh, attacked all those scholars. Everyone knows who she is because of her books. Her book was what was most popularized more than Dr. Ruttman's books. And that's, what, and that's what changed the minds of a lot of people. James Lentz, he was, uh, and Alan Ryman, crazy preachers. Crazy preachers in street preaching. But they serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And they just, uh, they preach unapologetically. While people, Ryman would dress up with a Catholic outfit and those Catholics would receive the tracks. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And then Lynn, he was uh, opposed by one 
preacher sent out by the city to stop street preaching. And then Lynn said, you better get out of here before I beat the fire out of you. And then that preacher said, I knew you got devils. I knew you got devils. And Lynn said, you're right, I got devils. You better go away before I give you some. <laughs> Gerald Sute carrying on the street preaching ministry and now a missionary to the Philippines. I mean, it was originally called SWAT Team for Christ, carried on by Ken Lansing now through the Bill Street Blast and Jack Crayler carrying on the street preaching ministry. Street preaching never died. It just kept carrying on throughout the world. Uh, Rick Sowell, Bible-believing pastors who have large members, not just small. Uh, big church pastors. Rick Sowell pastored 500 people. Rick DeMichael, 1,500 people nearly. And then you get Bible believers spreading around the world, spreading Bible-believing truth. It did not end there. It did not stop there. Anderson family to Papua New Guinea, Bardwells to Ukraine, Biscos to the Caucasus Mountains, Brigham's to Japan, Cecil's to Southeast Asia, Seselchik to the Colombian Amazon, Cochran's to Montreal, Canada, Chris's to Philippines, Dares to Brazil, Demopolis to Ukraine, Dickens to England, Dobbins to Zambia, Dunlap to Mozambique, Fitzgerald to Mongolia, Flick to South Africa, Grokey to Northern Europe, Hauser's to South Tyrol, Hammer to Germany, Hines to Quebec City, Huggins to Brazil, Jones to Mexico, Kerouac to Mongolia, Lavitas to Honduras, Lieb to Sicily, Mazzaferi to Italy, Michaels to Caucasus Mountain, Mooberries to Brazil, Murphy's to Germany, Pizos to Spain, Rismondo to Malawi, Robinson's to Malawi, Robins uh, and then uh, Shiraz to Brazil, yeah. Marilee Sykes to South Africa, Vernas to Philippines, Wiles to Ukraine, and untold missionaries in Chinese, communist, yeah. and Muslim areas that are still spreading Bible believing truth to this day and we come to our church as well obviously and we never left we never left and we intend to carry it on till Jesus come this is a movement that you should be proud of that you want to take part of rather than just sitting on your duff and doing nothing don't you want to do something after hearing this don't you want to do something after hearing this? This is the hope. This is how our history ends. This is how we attack the apostasy spreading around our world. This is our hope. Why don't we all do something for Jesus Christ? Get involved in this kind of stuff. Well, where, what Bible-believing church can I find, Pastor? Where can I find a Bible-believing church? That's why now we close it off right here. Go to realbiblebelievers.com. Go over here. And then in this website, you'll notice the home page right here. And then when you go to that, click on uh, the tab on the side right here. It looks like it's not working. So uh, that's, that's lame. It looks like it won't work until I unplug it. But if you click on resources, then it'll show you a Bible-believing church to attend. And if you can't find a Bible-believing church to attend from there, then find, uh, go to RBB Connect. Connect online. People can help you find a church. Uh, go to kjbchurches.com, worst case scenario. At least attend an independent fundamental Baptist King James only church. Get involved with the Bible-believing work in church. It'll give you, when you click on resources, things to start out in Bible-believing truth. Discipleship courses, learning doctrine, buying yourself a King James Bible. The best reference Bible in the world, the Ruckman Reference Bible. 118 appendices in the back with footnotes that fill from top to bottom. And then you can learn more that way. Bible-believing institutes that you can get involved. And then you, I mean, there's just so much soul winning. How to do soul winning. Materials you need to buy more. Arm yourself with knowledge, right? You're a truther. Information's important to you, right? Go to the Bible Baptist Bookstore. The website's there. Buy all the Bible-believing materials you need. Get to work. Get to work. We are in the end of our history. If you're involved to my people in this Bible-believing church and work, this is not a time where you sit still and sing blessed assurance. You got to get out and do something for God. Let's close our history with a bang, holding forth the Word of God against this globalist, elitist, Catholic, communist world. And even though our numbers are small, let's attack them all. I intend to go down fighting when that rapture hits before the Antichrist sets in. Let's end our history with a bang. Amen. And we finish our history. <laughs> Father God, what men learn from history is that men never learn from history from the past 6,000 years. And what we have seen are two streams, one evil and one good. Evil comes when we follow the lusts of our flesh.
That's where wrong doctrine comes in. That's where uh, communist controlling government comes in. Globalism sets in. Apostasy sets in. Uh, AI technology sets in to an antichrist system. And we've seen another stream, a stream that just simply follows what you told us to do. And that's where we ended up with the King James only dispensational mentality, independent fundamental Baptist by denomination. May we carry out this proud movement till you come again in Jesus' name we pray, amen.